This is FE Peer Review. The date is February the 27th, 2024. It's curved. Get over it. I wasn't sure what I was going to call this video when I started making it, and I recorded the content before coming up with a title. I'm glad to say that by the time I got to the end of the video, I had the idea for a title. And I hope you find it uh, entertaining. Please do remember to give it a like, and if you haven't subscribed, I always welcome new subscribers. Okay, here we go, folks. Uh, please excuse me if this video is a little bit disorganized. I'm sort of doing it quickly and on the fly. I didn't really have a plan to do a video today. But I saw this and just felt like I wanted to put some thoughts down, uh, record them, and get them out there. Pablo's dog channel, those of you who have not seen it, he goes to a certain spot in Santa Barbara on the coast and films the coastline and a couple of some oil rigs that are out there and various landmarks. He doesn't seem to talk much about what I suspect are his flat earth views. I believe he subscribes to flat earth views. A lot of flat earthers hang out on his videos and comment, and uh, they seem to think that what he's showing confirms their flat earth concepts. You can call them that, I guess. Well, Bobby Shafto, another video maker here on YouTube, he responds frequently and does really good analytical work that breaks down the images Pablo's dog posts and shows how they do not support any kind of flat earth notions and do very much align with what is expected on a globe. I'm going to point out this video here, Mesa Lane versus Muscle Shoals, as of one recent one that's very good and touches on some specific landmarks that uh, we're going to look at here. So in this video of Pablo's dog that came out nine days ago, there was a comment from somebody named B flat 1894. I have to assume from a name like that, he's probably a flat earther. I could be wrong. He asks, what is the overall height of that smaller light colored spot? Where is it measured from in relation to sea level? Bottom is at question mark. Top is at question mark. And these are all great questions. And these are things that Pablo's dog, excuse me, these are things that Bobby Shafto looked at in the video we're going to check on later. He's referring, though, um, this B-flat person is referring to these various spots on the hillside, which give us reference points on the topography. So there was a response to his initial comment. Somebody named Cinnamon Control, a name I believe I've seen comment on my videos, says that rocky outcrop looks to be around 130 feet up and maybe 10 to 15 feet tall. So you're only seeing down to maybe 115 feet. Now that was actually the conclusion that Bobby Shafto claimed to as well once he did his really detailed analysis. Cinnamon Control says, thanks, but I'll wait for some of my local friends to form a more accurate measure than the quote looks to be around speculation. Cinnamon Control responded, no need to get into that. I responded to uh, B-flat as well. Thanks, but I'll wait for some of my local friends to form a more accurate measure. I responded with, while you're waiting on your friends, you could look at the topographic maps created by the U.S. Geological Survey. They show quite good detail. Don't trust them. Now, I'm not saying that B-flat doesn't trust them, but I don't know whether he does or not, and he might not. And if he doesn't, I continued... They're used by all kinds of people in developing their property. People who have strong financial incentive in having reliable information so that they can profit from their land. In other words, these are people who are motivated by profiting from their land. That would be homeowners, owners of commercial property, people building expensive projects such as we see along the coastline there. Their incentive is personal financial self-interest. They need reliable information to do that. Their interest, their self-interest is not in promoting a globe conspiracy. They want to make money. And believe me, you can make a lot of money in California real estate. I used to live there for a very long time. So their motivation is to get accurate information to make good financial decisions about their land. And they do. And they make a lot of money. So I think the U.S. Geological Survey information is reliable. Okay, but that's just my opinion. So I continued. And then once your local friends actually do measure a few elevations, 
you could check their measurements against the USGS and, and Google Earth information to see how close they all are. It might be an interesting exercise. I'm going to add that people making Google Earth and the people making the U.S. geological surveys have access to the best equipment and the best skill sets to do that work. So if their goal is to measure accurately the ground surface, then they're probably doing it to a higher degree of accuracy than a bunch of amateurs are going to be able to do. So that's something to keep in mind. Be flat when you're talking with your local friends. They need to be really careful to do a very good job measuring those elevations. And it's not a difficult kind of measurement to make. But anybody can screw up even the simplest things if they don't, you know, if they try hard enough. So make sure your friends do a good job of measuring those elevations. And then compare them to the USGS and Google Earth and see how close it all is. All right, that was the first message I had here. I wanted to point out that all you have to do, I gave him, I can't put links in comments. YouTube blocks my comments when I do. I said, just do a Google search, etc. And here we are. I did a Google search. It got me to the USGS, uh, got me to another link within USGS, and eventually ended up with this map here. So we're going to make our way up Highway 101, a little ways up the coast. See if we can find Muscle Shoals here. There's Punta Gorda. We're getting close. Rincon Point, Carpeteria. So there's La Conchita. That's right next to Muscle Shoals. There's Muscle Shoals and La Conchita. And that bit of land that we're looking at is actually above La Conchita. It's, I believe it's these features here. This. This and this. I've looked at these in the past in some of my videos, by the way. Anyway, look, we've got a nice topographic map here. There's from the USGS, there's this uh, little valley here that would be on Google Earth. That would be this, this piece right here. And we've got topo lines. Let's see what the spacing of the topo lines is. I saw a 200 foot mark, so that would make two, three, four, five. That's 100 feet. So these are 20 foot topo lines. That's good enough to, to you know, roughly estimate the, the height above the water and, and know that we're in the right range. So there you go. Do geological survey. It's that easy to get the information. And it's that easy to check it against what your friends find, Mr. B-flat. Now I'm going to move on to something that Pablo's dog said. So he was responding to cinnamon control. He says, Pablo's dog says only 115 feet if, if there's zero compression along the apparent horizon. So 115 feet missing. Here, there's 115 feet more below the horizon, below that water line there, that we don't see. So Pablo's dog is saying, only 115 feet if there's zero compression along the apparent horizon. Even if the apparent horizon at Mesa is at lowest observed, we're seeing way too much of the cliff much of the time. Are we, Pablo? We are seeing, I'm responding, we're seeing way too much of the cliff much of the time. I responded with no we're not. And that's been demonstrated by myself and Bobby Shafto and Ruhif and probably others. And what is the known measurable natural phenomenon that causes effectively infinite compression of 115 vertical feet of landscape to zero while having zero compression effect on the land immediately above this 115 foot zone? So what is this natural phenomenon that causes 115 feet, vertical feet of land to shrink to zero while having zero effect on the ground surface another foot above. You know, this kind of instantaneous movement from infinite compression to zero compression is quite a stunning natural phenomenon if it exists. And one wonders why it has not been recorded and carefully documented for 
good couple of centuries now. We've had the technology to identify a phenomenon like that for probably a couple of hundred years. Pablo, there's no such thing as compression. So I am going to respond here. Let's see. Until this bizarre compression effect is actually shown to exist, there's no justification to claim it's the cause of what happens to be consistently explainable through Earth curvature. This is getting so old. And yes, it is. These people, these guys out there are going to spend the rest of their lives staring at the horizon saying, I don't believe it. I can't believe it. It's, it, there's, it's got to be compression. It can't be curved. No, it can't be curved. Get over it. It's no big deal.